for a lot of us here tonight, but I think it was important for us to hear from you about what you see as the major issues. For me, what resonated was the value of community and the importance of neighborhood associations and civic engagement. Now, those all resonate for me as a school board trustee because schools are neighborhoods in and of themselves. And they're very critical and very important to get our schools, councils involved in the political life. Because it's only through getting parents involved that they get their kids involved. And they see that as an example of civic engagement. So I really want to stress in my campaign the value of inclusion and the value of creating inclusive and vibrant communities and not shutting people out. And that's what I've done in the campaign to date and I hope it resonates with the voters. And uh, if, it, if it does, then I think we will have a much more successful Waterloo Region and that's what we're all about. No matter what our religion or what where we represent, we all want to be a, in an engaged community. So thank you very much and I wish the best of luck to all my fellow candidates. Thank you. Okay, I'm Jane Mitchell. I'm presently a regional councillor running for re-election. I'm also the chair of the Grand River Conservation Authority. And uh, certainly I would like to talk about all the topics and we had great conversations on neighbourhood and great conversations about uh, eliminating poverty and once again engagement did come up in that particular one as well. But I just took two issues to talk about. The first is housing and homelessness, which is one of my five priorities that are on my website. I have my five priorities and all my pledges there. And uh, the big thing for me is that with the homeless, they need to have homes. And that's number one. Yes, we've temporarily solved the out of the cold problem for this year, but those people still need homes. For some people, it's going to be easier to get them a home. Other ones, it'll be more difficult. And I want us to see that we have more money going to a second show in Waterloo. That's the social housing of Waterloo. And the ways that we can do that is, I think that there's, and Ken doesn't know this yet, but there's a little pot of money at the region that every year we use to reduce taxes. So we have the Jim Wyman Briggs. And I think we can probably use some of that pot of money, some of provincial money, uh, of course mostly provincial and federal money, and we can look at building another show here. Uh, also working of course with fundraising and a lot of other things. Uh, rent subsidies can help as well because we're never going to build as much as we need. Um, there's also uh, a thing I, I'm concerned about is belonging when we're talking about neighborhoods. Uh, belonging is something that is really important. You can get someone a home, but they're just there and they need to belong. So the House of Friendship has done a pilot project. I'd like to see that expanded. My second one is the environment. I don't know how close. I've got 30 seconds. Okay, so we have to adjust to climate change. Part of the problem <coughs> is flooding, particularly flooding of basements and getting a pilot project going with REAP to make sure that, uh, that people can have their basements not flood and tell them how to do it. Tree planting, of course, is always important. And as the chair of the Grand River Conservation Authority, water quality and quantity is always important. Hi everyone, my name is Karen Sean, and I am currently a city councillor at the City of Waterloo. For the past eight years, I have been the fi um, city councillor, but also the finance chair for the last four years, looking after all the budget and finance issues at the city of Waterloo. I'm hoping to bring a different style of gov a different style of leadership to regional government. I am running for a seat on regional council, and what that my thoughts are based on this idea of what and how the region of Waterloo engages with the community. And tonight was a really great example of really effective engagement. We came to listen. And on dates like today, where we've had some really bad news in Canada, we've been dealing with some really strange situations in, in Ottawa, I think it's really great to be reminded what positive leadership looks like. And I want to thank everyone who's organized tonight for, those, for that step that's taken to bring us all together. I really believe that the best solutions come from the people who need our support at the region of Waterloo, any level of government. And if we can do a really, you know, a much better job of actually tapping into your knowledge, understanding what your needs are, and, and asking the right questions, we're going to go a lot farther in figuring out what our solutions look like. My commitment to you, I'll be that, I will be that catalyst to change that culture. I think it's, um, I, my experience even in eight years in government is that you get a little get a little, maybe a little bit um, in, in your ways and you, and you stop taking risks with engaging with the public. You think you know more, you think you have the answers. I'm here to tell you that we never have the answers that we're looking for. We need to reach out to you, we need to find those answers 
and I'm, I'm just thrilled to be here tonight, so thank you. I'm not going to take up the full three minutes, and I'll, I'll thank you there and hope for your um, further input Clinton in the future. Candidate thank for you very much. to Regional Council here in the City of Waterloo. I'd like to thank the Social Planning Council and First United Church for hosting this event. I'd like to thank everyone for attending. I had a chance to get to four different tables tonight, and I'll just go through uh, some of the great ideas that were shared and some of the things I learned here tonight. It was a very valuable discussion. Uh, the first table I started was on civic engagement, and there was uh, some discussion on the fact that voting is really low. Uh, municipal elections, 30 to 40 percent. Federal provincial elections, 50 to 60 percent. What can we do to encourage more people to vote? Also, lots of discussion around support for neighborhood associations. There are some folks sitting at the table who live in a new neighborhood. How do you start a neighborhood association in their community uh, to help with civic engagement? Accessibility and inclusion. We talk about government policy. Uh, what can we do to provide supports for all people? People, regardless of abilities in our society. We talked about people with physical challenges, low floor, low floor buses, curb cutaways, uh, those kinds of things. Digital inclusion, uh, that was a very interesting one. And one of the things that was mentioned that I thought I never quite had heard before was that, um, you know, as government goes more and more to providing online services, Government should have a responsibility to provide people to access online services. So how about uh, free Wi-Fi in all government buildings? Uh, how about uh, computer kiosks in government buildings? I think that's a, an excellent idea and something that we can work on uh, going forward. Uh, also, I uh, sat in near the end on strong, safe neighborhoods, some ideas on how we can engage youth uh, in our community so they feel connected and uh, are part of the community as well. So in the last 30 seconds, the, 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 the mandate was, you know, what's your priority? The real thing for me is around the civic engagement question, and we've done a lot at the region. We now have webcast our, our regional council meetings. Uh, we also are on Rogers TV. I think we can look at different methods to engage the community. We've had town hall meetings in the past. I think it's time for us to look at those again. And I also think there's an opportunity with technology today to have an opportunity for people to actually engage in the debate. So as many municipalities, government bodies in Europe, where people can uh, ask a question over the internet through the clerk. So it's vetted and then the question is entertained or entered in, into the debate. So uh, zero seconds, I'm getting the hook. Thank you very much. <laughs> Ed Korswitz is the name. I am um, past president of Beachwood Park Home Association. I'm uh, in my 21st year of being a Rotarian. And that makes me engaged in the community on a regular basis. Not every four years as a politician, it's all the time. I think that's a very important thing to, to, uh, to understand. Understanding communities <coughs> is important because Waterloo is a community of communities. But it's also one of the things, let's not forget the work community, the social community, the spiritual community, and the community that we live in. What's the most important issue? I've always said throughout my whole campaign, the most important issue is the issue that you're discussing with the person at that moment. In government, we don't have the choice, okay, of just dealing with one issue. You have to deal with all issues. They are all important. When it comes to communities, one of the things that was very clear today that came out, and I firmly believe this, all communities need some type of hub. The community, the physical community that I come from, yes, they have a tennis court, they have a, but they have a hub. They, there is a, a reason for existence, okay? And that also provides us the opportunity to invite others that have moved into the community, therefore they are engaged. And we get them engaged in, in, that, uh, in that community. That is why I totally agree with the KW Community Foundation's Vital Signs Report, where they are putting a big effort, okay, of getting a sense of home, getting people, giving people the sense of home, and I think that is what's going to give us the success in the future of building our communities. I'm running for the now you can hear. Now I understand the climate, and I understand all the issues. Like in, we, we have to look after our infrastructure. That's what the region should be doing. And there's different ways of doing it. Mine would all be a biological way. Now, I also went to the seminary and I learned what the inner city <coughs> children and their families are all about. And uh, they don't vote because you know most of them are pretty 
set in their ways like the people have a lot. They don't vote either. It's the middle class that ends up paying for everything. Um, I think uh, if you vote for me, it'll be a good change. Now, there's a lot of people running this time. Usually, Mr. Sealing's just crowned every time because he's been doing it for so long. And he's done a great job, I think, on the whole part. But it's time for him to let some new ideas come along. And uh, the debt is part of my thing, too. I think we should be paying it down more. Uh, it's manageable. We have lots of wealthy individuals in this community. And it has a lot to do with the way things have been run. But we've got to focus more on caring about the individual. And we don't. Like, Out of the Cold program was something that the churches started after Mike Harris went against the poor. And, I mean, the region has a system set up already. I met some people last night there. They, they were going to the shelter at the House of Friendship, and it was full. So the region put them up in a motel. I mean, you know, when they're full, that's what they do. Uh, but we have to care about the climate. I think that should be number one in everybody's agenda. And if we can get each individual to do a little bit, like turn off a light or compost or walk to the grocery store instead of taking the car, then, uh, you know, we'll all do a little, and that means a lot. And uh, Mr. Suzuki's foundation <coughs> is watching this community, I understand. Hi. And thank you for this evening. Mm -hmm. When I walked in tonight, it was a little bit of a deja vu coming into the hall out here, and I remember talking about engagement and, uh, and how the, good the forum was here. And I, uh, thinking back to our planning for the LRT proposal, I don't know if anybody was here, those planning, we had round tables, we had magic markers, we had maps, people put their ideas down, and we had these open houses right across the entire region. This is a, a way of engaging people in things that we've done through social media. So I think we've done a lot of that, and there's a lot more that we can, we can do. As I said last night, we had one of these forums last night, this, his, this region has a long history of, uh, a long history of grassroots involvement. Uh, governments can't do everything themselves. They need to work with partners. And we've had a long history of, of good partnerships. The creation of the House of Friendship came up from the grassroots of this community. Uh, CODA, which became Lutherwood, uh, the Working Center, all those sorts of things. They, they grew up through the grassroots and uh, people who saw a need in the community began to work towards those needs. And we at the region were able to work with them and partner with them. And I think that a lot of the issues that were being discussed today are ones that really are partnership issues. We don't have all the resources, we don't have all the techni technical parts of it, we don't have all the expertise, but people in the community do. So if we can partner with them and leverage all of those resources in the community to address these problems, I think we'll be further ahead. And that's why this region is set apart from other regions across the province of Ontario. We do more in these areas than many other areas of the province, whether it's affordable housing, social services. Uh, the reason that our discretionary benefits were cut back so much by the province and they leveled the playing field is because we gave so much, because we moved ahead in that field and we try to support people in this community. So I think by leveraging our strengths, by working with a community group, by working with individuals and people with ideas, that we can tackle these problems and address them. Thanks for coming out this evening and look forward to working with you in the future. Thanks. Anyway, my name is Moira Sharon McGee and I'm running for regional chair. Um, what I've found tonight, again, it was we need to eliminate poverty in our region and we need to exemplify humanity in our region and we need to do that by being inclusive of everybody and meeting everybody exactly where they're at regardless of how it is that they came there by choice, by circumstance, it really doesn't matter. How do we do that? I learned some things tonight actually that I wasn't even aware of. I learned that when it comes to the world of, of um, when it comes to the world of digital um, media and, and becoming involved. There's computers that are available at working centers. You can buy them for next to no money because it is a problem. It's something that more and more every day our world is becoming more and more digitalized and we have to find a way to address that together. And I was really impressed that there are ways right now that our community is addressing that. Um, the other thing that I found today was that when it comes to health care, all of the health care needs need to be met of the individual and that they're looking at um, expanding the additional benefits for health like dental care, eyewear, things like that. And that kind of effort should be made at the provincial level, at the federal level, and obviously still at our regional level. Bringing all three governments to work together to ensure that people's needs are met. Because when people's needs are met, when they're not hungry, they're going to be happy. When they're not angry, well, naturally, they're going to be happy. And they need homes. We really need to tackle our home problem here. I believe we can do that. 
I know we can do that and we need to do it sooner than later. So I suggest we find a whole bunch of little homes, micro homes, and go with the future. Anyways, all the best and thank you for the forum. Okay. It's great. My name is Oz Kohler now I'm running for regional chair as well. But primarily I see myself as a citizen activist who's running for regional chair. And I learned a lot tonight. Typically, I expected to. Brigitte was in the poverty one. Charles was in the poverty one. This woman recognizes that I'm mature rather than old, and I thank her for that. But seriously, it was good. It was like it's being back home. In fact, I'm on holy ground here. Not because it's a church, but because this group has stood fast with out of the cold. This group has, glad she's not here, St. Kathy Savage is one of the groups. I know Jim. So I see people I've been working with and people that I want to continue to work with. Brad here. We talked about disability and accessibility. So I learn from these people, I keep learning from, but I got clear ideas, I don't just listen. You know that, I talk too, and I'm gonna keep talking. I am a dreamer, I'm not a realist in that sense, but I do have realism in the feet. If we organize together, we can take on the wealth, we can close that wealth gap, and not just have picky, picky reforms, we can have fundamental reforms. So I think of Martin Luther King, who inspired me, low 46 years ago, and I think of that strike in Lawrence, Massachusetts, of the 20,000 textile workers, 51 nationalities, mostly women, turned that community upside down against the greedy corporate boss. But they left us a legacy. We see it in Kitchener. We see it in that bread and roses co-op housing. And we see it in the song that's still with it. As we come marching, marching, a numbered women dead go crying through their singing the ancient call for bread. Small art and love and beauty, their trudging spirits know. Because it's bread we fight for, but we fight for roses too. My candidacy fights for bread and roses. Join me. Thank you.